Thank you, Pastor. Praise the Lord. Lose him. Tonight is the final night of a global crusade for October. And this day, the power of the Lord that liberates will liberate you. Every yoke broken. All the shackles, everything totally destroyed tonight in Jesus' name. Loosed. Like British. Set free. Father, well, thank you. Such a good God you are. Great, loving, wonderful, mighty, powerful. There is no yoke you will not break. There is no bondage you will not destroy. There is no sickness you will not heal. We come tonight and as we appear before you, we pray everyone will be loosed in Jesus' name. Confirm your word in every life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It is done. In Jesus' name, we pray. God bless you. you. Can see that we're coming to Romans chapter seven, and we're looking at verses two, three, and four. Romans chapter seven, reading from verse two, it says, "For the woman that has an husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as." He, the husband, liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. If the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of the dead. If the husband be dead, she is liberated. She is loosed. She is released from the law of the dead husband. Because once the husband is dead, the law that bound the wife to the husband, that law is also dead. It says in verse 3, in verse 3 it says, So then, if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free. And when that dead husband has gone, now she is free. She is loosed. She is liberated from the law so that she is no more adulteress though she be married to another man verse 4 in verse 4 we're looking at it says wherefore my brethren this is where he is going this is the conclusion and this is the result wherefore my brethren ye also have become dead to the law me I also I also, me also, because I believe in Christ, because I'm united with Christ, I am dead to the dead law by the body of Christ, that ye shall be married to another. The law dead, the old life dead, the old taskmaster dead. The old bondage dead. Now you shall be married to another, even to him who, re who is raised from the dead. And we shall bring forth, that we shall bring forth fruit unto God. I'm talking to you tonight on this final day of a GCK October in a state, loosed from the dead law and married to the living Lord. You are loosed. Amen. Amen. From the dead law. And you are married to.
the living Lord. Three things we're looking at very quickly. Number one, number one, we're looking at permanently loosed from the condemnation and the curse of the dead law. The law that had been given and the law were broken. We broke the law. And because of that, the curse of the broken law came over us. But now Christ comes. And Christ releases us from the condemnation and the curse of the dead law. Number two, presently loved. At this day, because now we're married to the Lord, the living Lord, we're married to the Lord, the exalted Lord. We're married to the one that has a name above every name on earth. It says we're presently loved with compassion and care by our dear Lord. Because we're joined unto him. And because we're married unto him. And because he has compassion and love. And he has brought us he unto himself. Married unto him presently at this present time. Because the past is gone. Because the old taskmaster is dead. Now we're presently loved with compassion and care by our dear Lord. Number three, perpetually living, perpetually all the time. Now that we're associated with Christ, and now that we're bound unto Christ, and now that we become the bride of Christ, perpetually living to this companionship, in this companionship and control of his living divine lordship. We're coming to number one. Number one, we're looking at permanently loose from the condemnation and the curse of the dead law. We're coming back to that Romans chapter 7 and we're looking at verse 2 for the woman, the wife, the woman, the married woman, which has an husband, is bound by the law, by the law of God, by the law that we have received until death do us part. Bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, only at that time, after the husband is dead, it says, <clears throat> I did that for you. But if the husband be dead, she is loose from the law of her husband. In verse 3, it says, in verse 3, so then, if while her husband, the first husband, leaveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if, the, if her husband be dead, if the husband be dead, if the one that has the control, the lordship, the law over her, if that one be dead, she's free from that law. So that she's no more adulteress, though she be married to another man. What's the Lord telling us there? He's saying that once the old law, the law of sacrifices, dead, the law of rituals, dead, the law of tradition, dead, the law of sacrifices and offerings, dead. And once you realize that, and you accept that, and you believe that, and you commit yourself to the new Lord, to the Lord Jesus Christ, it says, once that old law is dead, the condemnation that it brought is dead in your life. The curse that that thing brought is dead in your life. Amen. In Romans chapter 8, reading from verse 1, Romans chapter 8, verse 1, it says in verse 1, is this now? 
There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. They have believed on the Lord Jesus. They are married to the Lord Jesus. They are committed to the Lord Jesus. They have gone away and they have abandoned all those rituals, all those ceremonies, all those sacrifices, all those offerings. They are dead to that old law. It says because of that, and you cannot be dead to the law and not be married unto the Lord. Those two things go together. You forsake the old, you come to the new, and you are married unto Christ, and you have made the covenant with Christ, and you say yes to Christ with the totality of your heart, your mind, your life. It says now there will be no condemnation anymore because the condemnation, because the guilt, because the punishment, because the penalty of the broken law, everything is taken away because you become dead to the old, dead to the old Lord, and dead to all those rituals. And now you come to the redemption of Christ, married unto Christ. It says, so walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit look at verse 2 in verse 2 it says for the law of the spirit of life in christ we come to life in christ when we turn away from all those old rituals old rebellion old evil old sinfulness and we come now to live by what christ has done I forsake the old, I come to the new, I abandon the old, and I come to the new. It says, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Somebody shout amen there. That's what he does. He sets us free. And the old law to the old life, everything is abandoned and we come free from the law of sin and death look at verse 3 in verse 3 it says for what the law could not do what the old law could not do what the rituals could not do what those sacrifices could not do and what those ceremonies old covenant ceremonies what they could not do in that it was weak through the flesh God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. He brought on our own flesh, yet without sin. And for sin, condemn sin in the flesh. Look at verse 4. In verse 4 it says that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Christ came and he lived a perfect life. A sinless life, a spotless life, and the righteousness demanded by the law. He fulfilled everything in his character, in his moral, in his conduct, in his lifestyle. And he did that for us. He did that for us. You, you, you understand? When a woman is married to a man, the name of that man comes on the woman. The treasures... And everything the man has comes to the woman. When you are married to Christ, his righteousness is imputed unto you. When you are married to Christ, his purity, his power is available for you. When you are married to Christ, everything Christ has, the favor he has in heaven. And the goodness that the Father has bestowed on him comes on you. And, but you must forsake the old girlfriend, 
the old boyfriend, the old same partner, the old one, and then even the law that is now dead, you must forsake. And then you come to Christ. And when you come to Christ like that, fully in Christ, totally in Christ, completely in Christ, not that you are going between uh, the new man or uh, between Christ and the law. It's like the woman that says she's married to this new man now is going between uh, that other same partner and then the husband, same partner and the husband. And 50-50, she gives 50% to the husband and 50% to the same partner. That one is, you know, not really married. But when we come to Christ, we do not share our life. We do not share our commitment between the old law and the Christ, the Lord, who has now become the husband of our lives and we stay with Christ you will stay with Christ permanently you'll stay with Christ in Jesus name and condemnation will be taken away no more condemnation for the people that are married to Christ and they are committed unto Christ wholly and fully and completely and also the curse the curse the curse that came with the old law now that the old law is taken away we have total freedom from the curse of the dead law look at galatians chapter 3 and i'm reading from verse 13 galatians chapter 3 verse 13 Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. When the law died, when the rituals died, when those ceremonies died and they were buried, and then we became married unto Christ, giving unto Christ, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. And no curse will come on the true believer anymore in Jesus' name. And it says, be made a curse for us, for it is written, cause said, is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Verse 14, in verse 14, that the blessing of Abraham, the curse is not pushed aside. The curse is now taken away from you, from your head, from your life, from your family. The curse is broken, and the curse is taken away. It says, because Christ died for us, it says that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Amen. Amen. That faith unites us with Christ. That's what it means to be born again. You are born again. And the old life, dead. The old law, dead. The old sacrifices, dead. And the old rituals, all dead. And the old calamity, all dead. Now you are married to Christ. There's no sin in Christ. There will be no sin in your life. And there's no sickness in Christ. Sickness cancel from your life. There's no curse in Christ. Curse cancel from your life. And there is no, you know, some suffering coming. I don't know where this is coming from. Maybe it's from the village. Everything cancel from your life in Jesus' name. And now all you have is the blessing of Abraham. And the curse will not come anymore in my life. In my family, in my profession, in my ministry, everything you set your hand on will prosper. Look at Proverbs chapter 26, and I'm reading from verse 2. Proverbs chapter 26, verse 2. As the bird by wandering, as the swallow by flying, so the curse costless shall not come you lost a good amen there. the curse costless 
shall not come. What does that mean? Now the curse is still in the territory of Satan worshippers. And if you stray, if you go there, I want to see what they are doing. I want to learn about that cult. I want to learn about all those rituals. You are the curse now. You went and you stuck your head into the very source of the curse. But if you stay with Christ, if you abide with Christ, I am born again. I live in newness of life. Christ liveth on the inside of me. I go by his rule. I go by his way. And I do not stick my head into all the curse of the past. The curse, causeless, will not come unto you. And there are times, you know, some people think they are playing or they are dramatizing and they go to the regions of the dark and then they learn their incantation. They say, this is only for play. This one, I'm not going to worship anything like that. And you speak the language of idol worshippers. And you sacrifice, you see, it's only for play. You sacrifice the sacrifice of those powers of darkness. You see, this is only for play. You do the masquerade and the, and the involvement with all those powers of darkness. Now, anything that comes upon you, you cost it yourself. Stay with Christ. Christ does not carry masquerade. I will not carry masquerade. Christ does not speak in the language of the spirit of darkness. I will not speak their language. Christ does not wear the regalia of the people who are worshipping idols. Stay away from all that. And as you stay away from everything of the devil, everything of Satan, everything of masquerades, everything of idol worshippers, as you stay away, the curse, causeless, will not come unto you. Amen! You know, some prophets, they'll tell you, what's your background? What's the territorial spirit that's following after you? You say, I don't know about any territorial spirit. They say, go and find out. They say, that place, that place, dig that place. And when you dig, whatever you see there, carry out. Jesus never said that to anyone that came for healing was their territorial spirit and was the curse that they needed to dig up jesus never told anyone to dig up anything what jesus never did i will not do i will not do the old is passed away the law is dead the rituals are dead. The ceremonies are dead. And now we're married unto Christ. And because we're married unto Christ, it says, So, the curse, causeless, shall not come. I'm looking at somebody there. On you. In your life. At school. At work. In your business. Now you are free. I am free. So the curse, costless, shall not come upon you as you believe completely on the Lord Jesus Christ. We're looking at number two here. Number two is the pres what you are presently loved with compassion and care by our dear Lord. You see, when you get married to Christ, when you come to Christ, then he loves you more than ever before. But you know, there are people, have you heard of them? Uh, you, you met her the other time. And you see, you look happy. What are you preparing for? I'm preparing for marriage, marriage, marriage. And then you see her one year after and you say, are you married now? I'm still planning. 
two years after have you married now i'm still planning there are people who are planning to get married to christ and then you ask them tonight if you're going to give your life to the lord and if you're going to begin this new life raise up your hand i'm still thinking i'm still wondering i'm still planning they miss that day. The following day they come. Today is your chance. You can get married to Christ. So that all condemnation, all causes will be totally removed. Raise up your hands, stand up. The man is not standing up. The woman is not standing up. Why? I'm still thinking. I'm still planning. There are people that think and plan. They think and plan for years. And they never get married. You will not be like that. I said you'll not be like that. What a great opportunity to come to Christ. Christ the Lord. Christ the liberator. Christ Emmanuel. God with us. Christ that makes all things possible in our lives. The first chance you get. The first opportunity you get. That you are going to be married to Christ. And all the blessings of Christ in heavenly places will belong to you. That's the time to decide. And you'll be able to say, I've decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. The world behind me and the cross before me. No turning back. No turning back. Do friends forsake and do friends persecute. All the same. I've decided to follow Christ. No turning back. No turning back. Do friends may be pulling me and may be saying, "Are you going? Are you going? Are you going? Are you going away from the old law? Are you going away from the old tradition?" Are you going away from the old ceremonies all the same? I've decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Tonight will be your night in Jesus' name. Look at Romans chapter 7 verse 4. In Romans chapter 7 verse 4. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also have become dead to the law. You don't have anything to do with that old law anymore, with those rituals anymore, with family tradition anymore. You are dead to them because new life is coming to you now and it says that is done by the body of Christ that ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead that we should bring forth fruit unto the Lord, unto God. When you get married to a man, the fruit coming out of you will be the one that man is producing through you. When we come to Christ, the fruit we have is the fruit of our union, our fellowship, our integration unto Christ. We don't have bastards anymore. We don't go to Satan and then through Satan have fruit. We don't go to rituals and through those rituals have fruit. We don't look at the people of the world and copy them and have their characters anymore. Our fruit we bear with Christ, unto Christ, in Christ. And we have the fruit of Christ and the fruit of the Spirit was that love. If it's hatred, it's not coming from Christ. You are getting united to another source, another personality. The fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace and long-suffering. Bad words will not come out of your mouth when somebody persecutes you. In fact, it says rejoice when you are persecuted. And faithfulness, fidelity, honesty will be the fruit coming out of you. Because now you are married unto Christ. Our union with Christ, our interaction with Christ, our commitment to Christ brings the fruit, the fruit of 
righteousness there will be gentleness you will not be harsh anymore harsh in your language to the people that are closest to you gentleness will be in your life goodness will be the fruit you are bearing because now you are united to Christ you are married to Christ and he looks at you with compassion and care because he is our dear Lord. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 1. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. He is the son. He is the number one. He is the exalted and the excellent Messiah. And now you come, you become a member, a member of Christ. You are like his son. You are like his mouth. You are like his eyes. You are like his feet. And now as dear children, you are followers of God. Look at verse 25. In verse 25, husbands, love your wives as Christ also loved the church. Christ loves every new creature. Every newborn again person, everyone that has just given his life to the Lord, a lie to the Lord, Christ loves with heavenly compassion. And then he also gives the care. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Verse 26, it says that he might sanctify and cleanse it as you come to Christ now. We're talking about being married to Christ. You understand? The husband wants his wife to be clean, clean physically. And you know, if the wife you know, is taking the husband for granted, I will not clean up herself will not even wash every day, will not put on good clothes and neat clothes and clean clothes, taking the husband for granted, that marriage will not go very well. So he wants us clean physically. He wants us clean morally, morally, because he is the husband and he is the bridegroom and he wants the wife he wants the one who is associated with him now integrated to him now he wants her he wants you he wants me to be morally clean spiritually he doesn't want us getting involved with satan with belia he doesn't want us getting involved with the devil in any way he doesn't want us going off where are you going? Where are you going? He's going to eat the sacrifice of the dead or the sacrifice of tradition. No, we don't do that anymore. He says Christ has now made us his bride that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. In verse 27, verse 27, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. Now, when we come to Christ, we don't give excuses anymore. Uh, looks like what you told me was a lie. Uh, that's my, you know, peculiarity. Uh, uh. When you come to Christ, those peculiarities are taken away. Looks like I, I was going and I saw you afar off and you were holding a, you know, a woman or holding a man or doing whatever. Is that your husband? Is that your wife? No, no, we're just, we're just uh, friends. I have my wife, but then I, when I want to release myself, I also have this um, yeah, child of God doesn't do that anymore because now he wants to present you unto himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that it should be holy and without blemish the Lord confirmed that in your life in Jesus name and then he cares for us as the husband cares for the wife and when you, you have come to Christ now and you belong to the Lord the care of the Lord goes along with the compassion that he has for us look at first Peter chapter 5 
verse 7. In First Peter chapter 5, we're looking at verse 7. It says, casting all your cares upon him. Cares in the place of work. Cares in the family. Concern in your um, educational institution. All your cares. Concern that you have about your progress and about your promotion. Everything you cast all your care upon him. You're married to him. Is your bridegroom, is your husband. You have left the old life. You have left the old dead law. And now you are totally committed unto Christ. You cast your care upon him, for he careth for you. He cares for you. He will not allow any trial that will swallow you up. He cares for you. Any temptation that will make you fall flat, he cares for you. He will not allow Mr. Terrell, Madam Terrible, to have power, authority over you. Why? Because he cares for you. Amen? Yeah. And a man might threaten and say, you let me, you abandoned me, you forsook me, and you went to marry that other person. Well, that other person has power. That other person has authority. That other person has anointing. I'm talking about Christ. He has all the power on earth, all the power in heaven. And as you are married to Christ, no matter the old voice, and the old personality trying to threaten you, they will not be able to lay any hands upon you in Jesus' name. Therefore, you are not afraid, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Because at the present time, because you are now married to Christ, you have left the old, you have left the rituals, you have left the transgressions. You have left everything of the past. And you are totally committed unto Christ. The compassion of heaven will keep on working in your life. And the care of the Lord will keep on working in your life in Jesus' name. Amen for me. Amen for me. Heaven will say amen on your behalf in Jesus' name. We'll come to point number three now. Point number three, perpetually living. Perpetually living with this companionship and control of the divine lordship. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 26. And I'm reading from verse 13. I say, chapter 26, verse 13. O Lord, our God, all the lords beside thee have had dominion over us. O Lord, our God, before we came to the living God and to the divine ruler who now has ownership of our lives who now has total control of our lives before we came all the lords beside thee have had dominion over us it's like the woman that is now married she wants to take a decision instead of taking that decision with her husband she goes to the old friends old acquaintances and they are the lords over her life that's not a good marriage now it says we were in the old life and all the lords have had dominion over us but now by thee only we will make a mention of thy name. The only, the only. You're married to Christ now. His word, his word only. His idea, his idea only. 
It's decision. It's decision only that has rule, authority over your life now. And the old law, the old ritual, the old ceremony will not have any part in your life anymore. Oh Lord, our God. All the lords beside thee have had dominion over us. But now, by thee only will we make mention of thy name. Look at verse 14. Verse 14. They are dead. You see that? Because they are dead, you are free from the law of the old man. The law of the old personality. It says they are dead. They shall not live. They are diseased. They shall not rise. Therefore, as thou visited and destroyed them and made all their memory to perish. Uh, you don't say, I, I remember what I used to do. The memory is perished. I remember when I feel stressed, I know the liquid I go for, the alcohol, the memory is dead. When I'm down, and I know what I used to do. I take that thing, the roll up with paper, put it in the mouth, and then my brain will be on fire. I'll come back. It says no. It says now that you are married to the new man, to the Christ, to the Savior, and the Redeemer. You will not go back to the memory of the past because all that is perish you're new i am new look at second corinthians chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 14 second corinthians chapter 5 reading from verse 14 for the love of christ constraineth us that's what matters now. We're married to Christ. We love him. He loves us. He has compassion on us. He cares for us. And he's interceding for us. The only one that matters now in taking decision, in living a new life, the only one that matters now, the old Lord, the old husband, dead. That one doesn't count anymore. But the Christ we're married to now. And the Christ we have given our lives to now for the love of Christ constraineth us because we thus judge that if one died for all then were all dead. Look at verse 15. In verse 15 and that he died for all. Christ died for us. That's the level of his love for us. It's the level of his love for you. That they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. We're looking at Romans chapter 6. And I'm reading from verse 8. Romans chapter 6. We're looking at verse 8. It says, Now, if we be dead with Christ... If we are totally identified with Christ because he died for our sins and we identify with him. Because he was buried, we identify with him in baptism, symbolizing the death. And he rose again in new strength and power and we identify with him and we rise into newness of life. We believe that we shall also live with him. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead, dieth no more. Death has no more dominion over him. And as you believe in the Lord tonight, and as you are believing in the Lord, and you reaffirm and reconfirm your faith in the Lord, Everything that is dead by the death of Christ will not have dominion over you. And then in verse 10, verse 10 tells us, For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, 
he liveth unto God. Verse 11. In verse 11, likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, unto the old lifestyle. Reckon yourself dead unto that old lifestyle, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Look at verse 12. Verse 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. The old life is dead. Old law dead. Old ritual dead. Old ceremonies dead. Everything of the past. Old covenant dead. Now you come to a new relationship with Christ. A new relationship with the Lord that so loved you to have died for you. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that ye should obey each in the laws thereof. Give me a good amen. amen. Sin will not reign in your life. Amen. Sickness will not reign in your life. Amen. Satanic attack will not reign in your life. Amen. Christ, Christ, the healer. Christ, the savior. Christ, the redeemer. Christ, the deliverer will be the one that reigns your life from tonight in Jesus' name. Reign, Master Jesus. Reign, Master Jesus. In my heart, in my body, in my family, you are the one. You are exalted now. And at the mention of the name of Jesus, every other knee will bow in Jesus' name. As you give your life to the Lord, he is Savior. And you say, you are my Savior, you are my Lord. And the sin that reigned over me before will not reign again. The sickness that reigned over me before will not reign again. The bad habit, the smoking, the drinking, the fornication, the adultery, the works of the flesh that reigned over you before will not reign again in Jesus' name. Christ will reign. The Savior will reign. The healer will reign. The deliverer will reign. And then you live now a new life in Christ by the strength, by the grace, by the power of him who has come to change your life he will be the one that raised your life from today. Amen. In Galatians chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 20. Galatians chapter 2, reading from verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Christ liveth in me. Somebody there say that. Christ liveth in me. The Savior liveth in me. Say that. The healer liveth in me. The deliverer liveth in me. What's that saying? What he's saying is, picture yourself in a house. And in that house, permanently, there is the most effective, powerful doctor living in that house with you. Morning, night, noon, any time. That effective doctor is there with you, for you, in your house all the time. Sickness will not kill you. Think about this. The richest man on earth is living in the same house with you. Not only that he's living in the same house with you, he decided to marry you. And now you belong to him. Everything you have or he has belongs to you. And he's there for you, with you, in you, in your house all the time. Whatever you need, he'll provide for you. You will not have to go to the enemy of your life. You will not have to go to somebody out there. 
give me something. Because if Satan lends you anything, it's going to follow after you because you become his property. You'll not be the property of Satan. Think about somebody here who has all wisdom living with you and living in your house. And his wisdom is available for you. Then that means foolishness will be cancelled out of your life. Christ liveth in me. He will live in you tonight. And as you go, he will be living with you. Healing, the healer is living with you. Salvation, the Savior is living with you. Power, the one that has all power on earth in heaven is living in you. The power will be manifested. Christ liveth. Not that he lived in the past, not that the mill in the millennium in the future he will live. He liveth in me today. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the face of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Today being the last day, there should be nobody left behind who has not given his heart, his life, unto Christ, unto the Savior, unto the Healer, unto the Redeemer, unto the Deliverer. And he calls us now, he says, this is your chance. He wants to come and live inside you. And he says, behold, I stand at your door, the door of your heart, and I'm knocking. And any man, any woman, anyone that opens the door, I will come in. The Savior will come in. The healer will come in. The deliverer will come in. And the one that cares for us in every way, every time, he says, he will come in. It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. The Lord is right there now at your door. And it says when you open the door and you turn away from the old life, from the old law, and from the old Lord, and you come and you receive him as your personal savior, he will come in. He will forgive you. He will set you free. He will loose you from that dead law. Anywhere you are, you are ready now. This is your chance. This is your chance. Here at the Alpha location. There online. Anywhere you are, you want Christ, the Savior, to be your Savior. And to forgive all the sins <coughs> you have ever committed. Raise up your hand. That's right. God bless you there. Raise up that hand. Raise it up very well. This is your chance. Is the one that will break every yoke in your life. Is the one that will destroy all the works of the devil in your life. And now he says you want him as savior. You want him as the one who forgives. You want him as the one who sets free. Raise up that hand. If you are raising up your hand, please stand up. Amen. That's good. That's good. Stand up to the right. To the left, in front of me, online, you want this Savior, this Jesus. The one that will break every yoke in your life. And the one that will save you, set you free. You want to be married unto him now so that his love, his life, his compassion, his care, his skill, his conversion will come upon you. You raise up your hand, please stand up. God bless you there. God bless you there. And now, with your heart, from your heart, you say, I've decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I've decided to abandon my past life and to come to this new life in Christ. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided that the old rituals, the old ceremonies, the old sacrifices, 
and the old lifestyle will not remain with me. I come to Christ to be my Savior and my Lord. I've decided to follow Christ so heartedly. No turning back. No turning back. Tell the Lord that. Tell the Lord. Tell the Lord. He will receive you. He will forgive you. He will set you free. He will change your life. He'll be married to you. And the care, the concern, the rest of your life, everything will be on the shoulder of Christ. Tell the Lord. Father, I'm praying for you now. We pray in the name of Jesus. I'm asking, oh Lord, that all these people who have stood up, all these people who are raising their hands, all these people who have come to have Jesus as their personal Savior, be their Savior, be their Lord, in Jesus' name. Cancel the old curse. Cancel the old condemnation. And let your compassion take over now. And let your care take over now. In every one of their lives. In Jesus name. Confirm that salvation. Of the joy of salvation. And the love of God. In every heart now. Thank you Lord because we know you have answered. In Jesus name. I pray. God bless you. Keep on standing. Our counselors are there. And they will, you know, help you. Whatever question they're asking you, give the truth. The truth uh, and the true answer. Because now, Christ, the truth is your Lord. Satan, the liar, is no more your Lord. Thank you and God bless you. I say congratulations to you for this decision you have taken tonight to follow the Lord Jesus Christ and make him your Lord, the ruler of your life. I ask you to please cooperate with the counselors who are standing with you now. Give them your correct name and your correct address. For those of you who are living in places here in the city that do not have number, please give a proper description by which we can reach you to be of help to you in your newfound faith. The decision to follow Jesus, give your correct phone number. Please Cooperate with the counselors and give them all the necessary details that they require from you that will help you and also help the counselors to be together. They want to help you. They want to direct you and show you the way to follow the Lord and serve him faithfully. Please do that. And the Lord will bless you. Cancel us. Let's be thorough in what we are doing. Don't be in a hurry. Do it correctly and do it rightly. Please be patient with them. For those of them who do not understand English language, let's see how to get our interpreters to be of help. If you are watching online, and you have given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ tonight, after the message of the man of God, there is a link, gckhq.org slash connect below your player. Click it and fill the form so we can assist you further in your new walk with Christ. Also, if you are listening via the radio or television and you just gave your life to Christ, send your name, phone number, and your location address via SMS or WhatsApp to this number. Please listen attentively. Plus 234 915. 
I take that again, plus 234-915-444-9263. There will be converts rally on Sunday, a special online banquet. For all who had given their lives to Christ from Thursday till today, including those watching online who have made this decision today. The banquet is coming up on Sunday, 5th of November, 2023. More details about this will be sent to you the pastor will be delighted to have you join this special banquet. Thank you and God bless you as you comply. For those who are in Benin City here, the Converts Banquet is coming up same date, 5th November 2023 at the Deeper Life Bible Church, 153 a Kenwan Road, Benin City. The time is 3 p.m. Counselors, let's be fast as well as be thorough. For those who cannot write, please take all the details and write in capital letters. For those who can write, help them with a writing pen to do the writing themselves. The telephone number is 11 digits. Make sure it is correct. Either the MTN or the Glue or Etel or any other line you are using, please give us your correct phone number, your correct address, where you live. If the place you live is not a place that could be easily located, then give us an address through which we can read either the place where you walk, whichever. All we want is an address through which we can locate you. The Lord bless you as you do that. Now you are a child of God. By the decision you have made tonight, and every information you give, you'll give it correctly. You'll not give any information that will, you know, present you as somebody who is not sincere. Counsel us, let's uh, move fast. Let's ensure we're reaching the people. If you are one of those who have decided for Christ tonight and nobody has reached you, please just signify by raising up your hand and then wave it so the counselors could locate you and help you. Please do that. The Lord loves you, and we love you too. Cooperate with the counselors so we can be of help to you. If you are finished in your particular area, counselors, you could move to another area. Let's do that collectively and do it correctly and ensure that we reach everyone who has made this good decision tonight. The decision to follow Jesus. And the rest of you, if you are not standing up, this is the time for you to begin to look up to God. 
Present your request to the Lord. Quietly, as you do that, in faith, tonight, the Lord will visit you. Counselors, let's move fast. If you are finished in your area, please just wave the flag to me so I can see you there and know you are through. Thank you very much. To the left hand side, we see quite a lot of people standing at the exit point. Let's try to reach them. Please don't be in a hurry to go away. This is the last night. The servant of God is not in a hurry. You see him seated, he's waiting. waiting. As soon as we are true with the counseling, he's coming back to pray the miracle prayer tonight. Don't be in a hurry. The bosses are there waiting to take you to your destination. Please be patient. The Lord has something for you. Don't hurry away. Counselors, if you are true, just signify. The Lord bless you as we do this faithfully. The man of God is ready, waiting to hear that you are true. If you are true, just wave the flag. Thank you very much. At the middle here, are you true? If you are true, wave the flag to me. At the far back, just wave the white flag. I'll see you. Oh, thank you very much. To the far right, if you are true, wave the flag. Thank you very much. Let's all rise up on our feet. The man of God is set. Let's rise up on our feet. Amen. Make that amen strong. Tonight, the Lord has come with compassion, with care, with kill, with healing, with deliverance. And there's no exception, I'll touch you there tonight. At the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. All sicknesses will vanish away in your life. Testimony tonight. Who will give the testimony? Amen, amen, and amen for you. Raise up that hand. And let the other hand where you have any sickness, any challenge, any curse, any oppression, any attack, any affliction, raise up that hand. When you hear the final amen, you know it is done. Father, we well, thank you tonight. You are God, a father that will never fail. Christ, we come tonight in your name. And you are the same yesterday, today, and forever, Holy Ghost will welcome you. We we'll pray a new creation in every life tonight in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray as we have left the old, the old rituals, the old ceremonies, the old satanic worship. We also live, we live all the old sicknesses and diseases. They will not remain in any life in Jesus' name. We're asking, Lord, that now you lose everyone. As you lose the woman from the dead husband, lose everyone in Jesus' name. We are not married to sickness anymore. We are not married to disease anymore. We are not married to demons anymore. 
We're not married to premature death anymore. And therefore, Lord, I pray, lose your people in Jesus' name. Healing for everyone. Deliverance for everyone. Redemption for everyone. And the taking away of yokes and curses for everyone in Jesus' name. Every curse in your life, I cancel. Every condemnation, I cancel. And all that holds of sickness and disease, I break that hand of disease away from your body. And that disease holding you tight, saying, you're my property. I tell you, disease, release everyone and let them go in Jesus' name. I pray the Lord bring total healing unto you right now. From insanity, you are loosed, you are set free. From blindness, you are loosed, you are set free tonight in Jesus' name. From deafness and dumbness, you are released in Jesus' name. Impediments in your speech, stammering. And you cannot bring out the word very well. It looks like something is choking your throat and holding your throat. Be released in Jesus' name. Swelling, fibroid, hernia, goiter, elephantiasis, any kind of swelling in your body, I command, come out in Jesus' name. Pain at the back of the head, pain in the joints, pain in the knees, arthritis. I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Paralysis, yokes, I take those crutches from your hand right now. Wheelchair, I pull the wheelchair from your seat right now. The strength of the Lord, the power of the Lord comes upon you now. Rise up and walk in Jesus' name. The disease of your old father is dead now. And then uh, they say that disease has been passed on to you. You are released. The disease of your old mama. And you see, although she's gone, she left that for you to be carrying. It's gone away from you in Jesus' name. Somebody said, because you'll not worship the idol of the family, and you refuse, and you say, I follow the Lord. Now, all the curses, uh, you know, of the idol is now following after you. I break that yoke in your life tonight in Jesus' name. Every evil thing following your life. Every power of darkness of evil following your life. You are released, you are loose, they are broken in Jesus' name. What they call bad luck is when I want to take an exam, I fall sick. It's when I want to go for the interview that they put me down. It's when I want to have this, I have that dream, I have that apparition, and everything is turned up right down. Tonight, everything is reversed. Every negative power in your life, every evil performance in your life, I break, I destroy. You are loose tonight in Jesus' name. Lord, Miracle for everyone. Healing for everyone. Deliverance for everyone. On my right, in my front here, far at the back, and then to the left, anywhere, everywhere, online, in every country, I release miracle. I release power. I release total freedom. Be healed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
it is done. Heaven confirms it. It is done. Check up. It's confirmed in your body. It is done. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. It has happened. It has happened. It has happened. You come out and give your testimony. I'm not 